1952, I came, to, came home to New York and went to see Turner Catledge, the, I forget who it was, managing or executive editor, uh, and told him I was getting stories into the paper even with bylines, very unusual for a stringer. Why didn't he hire me on a staff? He said that, uh, well, uh, they'd like my work, and that might indeed be possible. Uh, but he, unlike his predecessors, did not believe in having an elite foreign correspondence corps. He wanted to have New York Times reporters who could work anywhere. Would I be willing to spend a few days on the city desk just to see if I could cover a local story? Sure. And I had a stroke of luck. Um, I was sent to City Hall to cover a minor thing, the signing of the first contract under Title I of the Federal Housing Act, providing for cooperation between uh, uh, private industry and the federal government in building housing. Um, went to City Hall to cover the thing, then went to have a look at what it was that was covered by the contract. And Bob Moses, the famous Bob Moses, took me around and showed me. And then he told me that the real crown, the real jewel in this crown is going to be right over here in Columbus Circle. I said, what are you going to do here? It was not known yet. We planned to build a big cultural center here, the Symphony Hall, museums, and so on and so forth. Oh, no kidding. And you have a name for it? Well, it hasn't been decided, and it's not official at all, but something like Lincoln Center, maybe. And so I had a front page story in my three days in the New York Times, the first story about the plans for the Lincoln Center. Right? Catalyst said, you've done very well. Go back to Holland, we'll take a few weeks, and we'll, um, we'll, we'll, we'll hire you. Great, went back to Holland, a few weeks passed, a few months passed, occasional cables, what's going on, working on it, all of that. And then came in February 1953, great storm and a flood that broke the dikes in Holland, February 1st, 1953. Well, that was, <laughs> as I say, a big story. I'm, I'm reverting to type when I tell you that where, where thousands and thousands of people were drowned, my first instinct was a big story, right? Um, I was in helicopters with, with, with uh, American Army helicopters picking people out of trees all of that. And it was a tremendous story, not only for the New York Times, but also for CBS, where I was on the air night after night with long, very dramatic accounts of what was happening with this great flood, which had flooded a third of the whole country. Is this radio? This was radio. Mm -hmm. This was, yes, this was radio. Um, and uh, apparently I made some impression because I got a cable from Edward R. Murrow. Um, asking the cable, I can almost remember it, said, would you at all consider joining the staff of CBS News with an initial assignment in Washington? I said, gee, that's, that's very nice, but I want to work for the New York Times. So I sent the cable to Catledge and said, haven't heard from you, have another offer which would have to consider unless you could give me a time certain for joining your staff. And to my astonishment, he cabled back saying, suggest you take the other offer. <laughs>